the thing that I learned was that North Korea was essentially created by an American. And he had a lovely name. I mean, I love people with extraordinary names. He was called Charles Hartwell Bone Steel III. They don't get much better <laughs> names than that. And he was, if you can imagine, it was the 14th of August, 1945. Charles Hartwell Bone Steel III was a colonel, a young colonel, sitting in the outer office of George Marshall, the Army Chief of Staff, at the Pentagon with someone whose name you will be more familiar with, and that's Dean Rusk, who was also a young colonel. They were both on his staff, and they were listening over the shortwave radio to the Emperor of Japan, it's the 15th of August over in Japan, addressing the nation and surrendering and making that incredible piece of uh, understatement, you know, the progress of the war has not necessarily gone to our advantage. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> And so we're laying down our arms and surrendering. And Bone Steel and Rusk said to each other, well, that's great, that's that problem over. Now the problem is the Soviet Union, because they, as you may remember, very cynically joined the war just a few days beforehand. And they were now racing southwards through all the hitherto Japanese-owned places, like Sakhalin Island and Manchuria and Korea, and taking the surrender of the Japanese, and at the same time saying, these are ours. And uh, the view in Washington was that uh, is that uh, Japan particularly could be turned into a Soviet-run satrapy, that we would have the Soviet Union of Japan, and this we didn't want to have happen. So the Russians, the Soviets, had to be stopped. But where to stop them? Well, as it happened, Bone Steel had on his desk a 1944 issue of the National Geographic, which was devoted to the North Pacific. And they have these little insert maps that you may remember, and he spread it out on the table, and he said to, to Rusk, and this is all in Rusk's memoirs, um, isn't it droll and interesting that San Francisco and Seoul are on almost exactly the same line of latitude, 37 degrees 40 north? I think, uh, Dean, he said, or Colonel, I'm not quite sure how friendly they were, um, that we Americans should retain control of the old capital of, of Korea. I mean, Korea at this time was a Japanese colony. So once it's liberated, I think we should have control. So why don't we ask the Russians to stop just a little north of this line connecting Seoul and San Francisco? How about the 38th parallel? And, and Rusk said, that sounds a pretty good scheme. And they took the map in to, into George Marshall. And he said, yep, 38th parallel sounds pretty neat to me. Let's tell state, and they'll tell Moscow. Moscow, extraordinarily, the next day, the 16th of August, said, yes, you know, quite honestly, we're pretty exhausted, it's hot in Manchuria, there's lots of mosquitoes, the tanks keep getting bogged down in the mud. We'll stop where you suggest the 38th parallel. So we'll take control of everything north, you can have control of everything south. So they did, and as you well know, they, their point man in the north was, um, was Kim Il-sung, and the Americans, um, Yi Sing-man, Sing-man-ri, and two countries were essentially created and they went to war with each other and then there was this armistice and the DMZ and everything that we've come to know and be horrified by today. So when you think about it, if he hadn't drawn that line, the Russians, yes, they probably, the Soviet Union, would have taken all of the Korean Peninsula. But so what? You know, it would have been like Vietnam, it would have been like Cambodia where my son lives, it would have been like Laos, impoverished, poor, not as rich as South Korea is now, but it wouldn't have been disunited. You wouldn't have this lunatic dynasty in the north creating nuclear weapons. You wouldn't have the DMZ. You wouldn't have 24,000 American soldiers on permanent duty. And there wouldn't be this terrible tragedy of having this ancient kingdom of Korea divided into two if only the Americans hadn't interfered. And that's unfortunately the, the ethical question that underpins an awful lot of this book. We Westerners have interfered too much in the life of the Pacific Ocean and wherever we interfere, and that includes us, the British. Good God, we interfered far too much, and it does bad things. We should leave people alone. Mm -hmm.